Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I thought I'd go over M Center. This just came out, actually I'm about a week or two late, but it came out recently, and I thought I'd show you how it works. Basically, this is a stereo manipulation plugin. Uh, as you can guess, it's mid-side processing. But the difference is, it has two different ways to do it. One is traditional mid-side processing, like you see lots of other places, and the other one is spectral processing. So let's do this first and I'll move this in between it. As I move to the left, it will give you more of the mid or the center frequency. As I move it to the right, it'll be more of the sides or stereo frequencies. So here we go on the just normal mid-side mode. There we go, it's getting a little bit loud. Maybe I should turn the output down by maybe two or so. But when it's in the center, it's gonna sound the exact same no matter what you do. There's no difference except for the fact that I turned it down by two decibels. But that's normal mid-side processing. You're probably like, okay, I know what that does. Uh, the good thing with that is you can kind of move this here to increase or decrease the stereo in your mix so you can kind of blend it easily like this. So you can easily increase or decrease your stereo width here if you think like, oh, this is too much stereo, you can just move this down. And I'm using this on a mix, but you can use this on individual instruments as well. But the main thing you probably want to see is the spectral. So if I move this all the way to the right, and we'll do the exact same thing here. Move this down two decibels. And you can hear what it does. So the spectral will actually separate it a little bit more, I guess, cleanly than the normal mid-side does. But I'll let you hear what it sounds like. Okay, so that's spectral mode. But one thing I notice is when I move this to the center, I'm getting a little bit of like phasing and things that I don't really like. So let's look at some of the spectral settings and the advanced settings, and we'll talk about how we can kind of get rid of some of that. So one thing I found that can kind of get rid of some of that phasiness is increasing the time smoothing. So let's play it again and I'll increase that. So I think that's a little bit better, but something that helps it more is this buffer size. So if I move this really low, like 512, let's listen to it. And if I move it up, let's say to this one, uh, 8192. Actually, it's not as different as I thought it would be, but increasing the buffer size will give you a little bit less phasing and uh, a better sound in general. It does use more processing power, and if this is going to be used in real time, I don't know if that's going to work so well because it's going to give you some kind of latency, but that's just uh, if you're working something in real time here. I've already recorded it, so it doesn't really matter. So you heard what that does. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can actually blend these. So if you're like, ah, you know what? I don't really like the phasing so much with the complete spectral, but mid-side, I don't really like that either. You can blend between these, so I'll let you hear what it sounds like if I blend them. So 
by using that, you can find the perfect blend for you. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. But the other big thing with this is if we look down here. So let's move this to the middle here. Here, you're probably thinking like, what is this? What this does is it allows you to control the center or sides. So let's say, I'll play this and let's draw on here. So you see what I did there? I have the lower frequencies there all on the center channel. So there's not any side or stereo information, but in the upper channels, I'm doing the exact opposite. It's all sides and it's no mids. So that's one interesting thing you can do with that. Uh, of course, if you don't like drawing like this freehand, you can change this from drawing mode to the points mode here, which actually too many points. So let's just clear it. And you see, we can move these nodes around and do whatever we want like that. And you can double click and add more nodes, move those around. If you find that's easier than drawing with your free hand, which I usually do. I don't think there's any presets really in here yet for that, but here we do have some presets. I'll move these here and go through just a few of them so you can see what they have. So you can see it has a few presets that kind of demonstrate what it can do. There's, let's say, dynamic stereo control. So normally you don't need this, but I think one of the interesting things is you have these mods here where you can control this by the input like this. Now, I don't know if I would use this particular thing on a song or any instrument, but this could be good for a mix where you have a snare drum, for example, that has too much stereo information. You can put one of these nodes someplace where the snare drum is hitting and then have it move dynamically whenever the snare drum hits to just remove the sides if that's what you want to do. So by having this, there's a lots of interesting things you can do. You can kind of work with the spectrum surgically to get rid of stereo or center information, which I think is really cool. So hopefully that gave you an idea of what this can do. If you have any other questions, leave them down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and be sure to check out all the other plugins at melderproduction.com. Till next time. See you.